Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniatures, and I got a nice little obscurity for you today. Today's, well, I want to say miniature, but it's not really that mini when, you know, his entire body takes up more than my hand's, you know, width there. This comes to us from Dark Gods. They ran a pretty successful Kickstarter a uh, little while back, and this was one of the models that was a stretch goal. This is the Rage God, and these are the parts that are going to make the Rage God, but you probably already saw it if you saw the thumbnail. So we have a four-armed, four-winged, one-head, two-bladed, giant monstrosity, and that is most certainly the case. This guy is a huge hunk of resin, and I know it's shiny. Um, <laughs> most of that is due to my mismanaging of how I cleaned it. Uh, here's his base. His base is just as massive. You can see I did already poke some metal rods through there to get him to be more stable and sturdy. I can't even fit the whole thing on the screen. That helps a little bit. Just to give you guys a good indication. So funny thing, and I know I posted this online, um, I didn't realize at the time that the base was actually supposed to be hollow. And it was made hollow, but it was full of resin. So when I poked these holes in to put the supports for his feet, um, yeah, resin erupted. So apologies, Dark Gods, as I desperately tried to stave off all of the resin flowing everywhere. Um, again, that's on me. You live and you learn. But I think once it's primed up, that's not going to be as much of an issue. So, one issue I did come across, and kind of the sucky thing about when you have a model this big as a single piece, and this is my one criticism, main criticism I should say, is that it helps to break the models down into smaller, more manageable chunks to print, because I have these print errors on the bottom halves of his arms. Do I want to go and print the entire thing all over again? No, I do not. How do I know that they are print errors? Because when you go to attach his hand, you can see that there is a significant space underneath. But you know what? A big glob of green stuff should really do the job there, and it's not going to be a big issue in the end. So that was the only issue were the two hands there. Could have been my printer, which wouldn't surprise me. Much more so than the actual supports. Support-wise, it seemed to be pretty good. You can see the head, skull face, lots of horns. I dig it. It's just something different, and when I see something visually unique, and yeah, I know it's got a bunch of extra arms and limbs, but, you know, the weird double conjoined bodies, I think, is what kind of set it over the edge for me. It was funky. So they had the option of either having swords for those top arms or just big punchy fists. I went with the blades. There is an optional tail. It has little notches that match up with the spine and these nicely firm glutes back there. So it's just going to go like that. Got to have the tail. And then we come to the wings. So the wings, they gave me a hard time. <clears throat> I did try the pre-supports. Sometimes they worked. Sometimes they didn't. Um, a couple of them I did support myself. Here are the upper wings. Now, I know the Dark Gods actually also mentioned it's probably worth pinning these on, and I am going to do that, I think. It's just because there's such a small contact point for such a big body. So that's the top wings. Let's kind of splay it all out here. And then the bottom wings, I think, are the ones that are really going to need those supports in there because they're just huge huge wings and then I printed the other one in a different color whatever reason this peachish color really seems to be a lot more stable here's a fun mishap I had I don't know why that happened I had the supports print quite a few times on their own with nothing on it that was fun too so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to put some pins in to support these, at least the bottom wings. If I can fit it in the top ones, we'll do those as well. Put a little bit of green stuff in those upper arms there to fill in that little gap so it doesn't look like he's got oversized fists and giant bracelets. I, mean, I know oversized bracelets were a thing at one point in fashion history, but you know. 
I'm thinking like a really dark red for the skin and then like bone colored armor to go along with the bones and the skulls. I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions, by all means, share them. But in the meantime, I'm going to grab all these and we'll go get them put together. Sit tight. All right, folks, uh, this model has given me some major headaches, but I have managed to get it done. And in relatively one piece, uh, this, this, this has been a trial and tribulation, I gotta say, and not as a knock to the sculptors that created it, it's just... It did not want to cooperate every time I worked on it. It's kind of kind of unfair. Uh, so when I went out the other day to get him all primed up and put back together, you can see I did actually try to fix up the issues with the arms. They're a little bit more full. I tried to put some support in with the limbs on his back. Some look better than others, but I think given a good paint job, or even an adequate one at that, uh, I, I think that should mask some of my sloppy sculpt overing skills. So when I went to go prime him, um, it was quite gusty outside and I didn't realize that at first. And I gotta say, he's not glued down to his base, but he's pretty darn secured nonetheless. And his swords, thankfully, um, the wind actually blew him off of his stand and he took a tumble, and I came outside, and thankfully it had just drizzled, and the sprinklers had been on, and the ground was quite wet. He was impaled into the dirt, head down, in one piece completely. The only casualty was I did manage to lose one of his little hooks that was hanging off of his chains there. And you know what? I'll take it. We'll take that as a, a battle scar. But otherwise... Um, I know, I think painting it, it's not going to be too much of a hassle. If you've got access to, like, a airbrush or big sloppy brushes to get a good solid base coat on something like this, I think it's absolutely a good idea. It's just kind of crazy. Crazy how it's set up, crazy how it goes together, and crazy just the overall size. Ooh, I didn't notice that. I might want to touch that up. I'm not sure how I want to go forward with painting this sucker, though. My first thought is a red body, but I think a kind of grayish flesh tone might be fun as well if you guys have any thoughts i'd love to hear them and you're always welcome to post them here or on our patreon where i'm usually nagging people for suggestions because a lot of times i just get stuck with analysis paralysis of trying to figure out what the heck i'm going to do with these things so yeah this is a big model let's let's make no presumptions in that regard where is our witch hunter friend yeah i do like the fact that even though it has a large base and even though i finally got that dealt with being a liquidy mess on the inside uh, there is plenty of room all around it so if you wanted to have a bunch of models coming in base-to-base -base contact with it that's not going to be too much of an issue so you can have plenty of stuff pile in against it and not have too much of a you know overhang there and I think most models are also gonna be able to clear the wingspan as well other than other big giant monsters which I don't feel like we're having them right now. So this is, again, printed at regular, 100% size. Um, I did end up, I don't remember if I showed it or not, those wings, I did end up supporting and putting some rods in as well as green stuffing around it just to make sure that everything stayed nice and neat. Not only that, but then I went ahead and put a little bit of glue between each of those wings just to give a little bit further support. Yeah, look at that. That's a sloppy mess. At least the bottom ones, I think, blended in a little bit better. I'm not the greatest when it comes to working with green stuff, but I figure we did a decent job. Good enough, and I think once it's done, I think the arms look a lot better, at least, than the rest of the wing area. Uh, other than that... I gotta say, interesting model, definitely a different look. I mean, yeah, we could have gone with the tried and true dog-like, bloodthirster, gargoyle style, but I do appreciate when artists and sculptors try something a little bit different. So I do definitely enjoy that. Although it would have been kind of cool to have extra fists with more swords, but that's going to be a whole different issue. And again, uh, my only suggestion to the artists at Dark Gods going forward is perhaps just cut things into a few more pieces to make life more manageable in case of those last minute printer errors. 
because nobody wants to have a fail right at the very top. That was just kind of unfun. Otherwise, a solid effort on their part, and I do look forward to seeing some of the other gods and monsters that they have coming forward. I know they just had a Lust God, Fulgrim-like, snake-bodied, quad-sword-wielding monstrosity unveiled the other day. Whether or not I get to it anytime soon is an entirely different story. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with this guy as it is. So, uh, wish me luck, and hopefully, like I said, if you've got any suggestions, please do drop them down below, because I would love to see them. We'll put a link to Dark God's stuff if you want to check it out. There's some fun models there, especially if you like gribbly, gross, and nerdily looking chaos monstrosities, and they definitely have something up your alley then. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye-bye.